Today's devotional can be found in Doctrine and Covenants, section 121, verse 17. That those who try cry transgression do it because they are the servants of sin and are the children of disobedience themselves. Okay, so... Have you ever noticed that people who notice sinning the most are they who do it the most? And instead of focusing on their own behavior and realizing how much guilt they should be feeling, or they are feeling, they choose to ignore their guilt and focus on the behavior of somebody else so that their actions don't seem as bad to them. I mean, those who berate other people's imperfections have them as well. They just don't want to acknowledge them because they're so afraid that they'll fall apart or that they will look like a piece of shame in front of others. So they choose to not acknowledge their own imperfections and instead focus on that of others to the point where it might be a sense of bullying. And they are too prideful to look at their own transgressions and they focus on others so that maybe because they're afraid that they think they can't repent of their own own transgressions, but let me tell you, the atonement is infinite and eternal. And we all sin at some point in our lives. Everyone who is aware of what they do and has gained the knowledge to choose between good and evil, they spend some time as the servants of sin, but they do repent, whether it be a short process of simply saying I'm sorry to everyone and trying to do better, or whether they repent and endure consequence before being able to do, try again. Being the servants of sin does not mean we are bound to sin forever. We are a servant, but we can always be freed by the atonement because the atonement brought us out of that transgression, which was eat the eating of the fruit. And that, and that atonement is infinite and eternal, but... It only works on those who do not wish to stay the servants of sin. And those who realize that they cannot repent by themselves. And they who no longer wish to be the children of disobedience, but to rise beyond that. And to live as children of God, which they truly are. You see, people focus on others' behavior so they don't have to look at their own. Because if people focused on their own behavior instead of judging one another, I think people would be less smug about themselves. I think they'd be less judgmental. I really think they would take a moment if they truly took a look at their own behavior and realized, oh, am I really that way? towards myself, do I really forget that I'm a child of God, and do I really forget that others are children of God too? But some don't, some think they're perfect, and that's, that's quite sad, but that's their opinion, and so they focus on others' behavior, because some think they're perfect, and they think that everybody else is imperfect, and that's, that's a very bad transgression indeed, because that's pride and arrogance. And they don't realize is they label everybody else sinners and, and transgressors and children of disobedience. They themselves are a, ch a child of disobedience because they are not obeying the commandment to love 
the Lord by loving themselves enough to act in a respectful manner or to love thy neighbor by acting kind towards them. I mean, we have our agency, but we can become trapped in our sins to the point where we will have a very difficult time escaping that servitude of sin. But we have our agency. All who come to the earth shall have agency. I mean, Satan tries to influence people into thinking that they are sinners and others are sinners and that nobody can be perfect because he will never get a chance to even come to mortality. Because he is a servant of sin and though he has power to influence others to become servants of sin in this life, his power ends with death. For he is already spiritually dead, and he's aware of this. We have our agency, but we must remember that all choices have consequences. And though we can make choices, we cannot choose the consequences. We can only endure what we have chosen until we are ready to repent, and then the Lord will help us. And with that said, I love you all so very much, and I say these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.